Today's scripture is proof of one thing. No one really reads the Bible literally. If you've ever questioned it before, as you listen to all the dialogue among different denominations, today is proof that no one really reads the Bible literally, even if they think they do. Here's a test. Do you know anyone who is without property? Do you know anyone who doesn't have a car, a family heirloom, anyone who sold everything they own? Me neither. Sell all you have and give the money to the poor, Jesus says. What's in your wallet? Now, I don't say that to guilt people into giving, and I don't say that just to judge literalists. Okay, maybe a little bit. But the idea that we take things literally in the Bible, how we read it, this is one of those passages that highlights for us, invites us to think about how we receive the scriptures. There's folks who said, in our denomination, we take the Bible seriously, not literally. Others say where the Bible speaks, we speak, and where the Bible's silent, we're silent. But a bigger question often is how do we read it? And often we are so wrapped up in the facts, the literalism, that we miss the message. Jesus' words today are an invitation to imagine a bigger world, a bigger God, a bigger understanding of love and grace. Jesus said, it is God's pleasure to give the kingdom of God. Heaven is not a limited prize for those who made it on some eternal scavenger hunt to the end. Heaven is not a carrot being dangled before us for good behavior. Heaven is a gift from God, freely and joyfully given by God. Jesus talks about heaven as a place we invest with our hearts. A place we invest in with our hearts. Not in things. Sell all your things and then give to people, he says. Invest not in things, but in people. Fear not, literalists. You don't have to sell everything. You're off the hook. It's not what Jesus is saying. Just don't invest your heart in the stuff you have. We don't have to feel guilty for having stuff. It just can't be our identity. Fear not. We don't have to give it up. We just can't invest in it. Our identity should be found in loving God and then loving neighbor as ourselves. Investing in practices that feed our soul. Investing in communities that feed the needs of others. Our identity should be found in loving God and loving neighbor as ourselves. Investing in relationships. Investing in the people that God puts into our lives. Our identity should be found in loving God and loving neighbor as ourselves. And we know this is true because it's the core of the Torah, of the law of Moses. All of the Hebrew Bible is centered around this idea. Jesus lifts this up himself. What's the greatest law? Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. But it's so abstract. It's so immeasurable. This whole idea of loving God, loving neighbor as ourself, investing in each other as a way to invest in God, this whole thing, it's so useless for judging other people. Have you noticed that? This unconditional love thing isn't really good for measuring ourselves up against the neighbors. That's why we want heaven to be a reward, right? So we can flaunt it. That's why we want heaven to be measurable so we can put all of our good deeds in a ledger and then go back and count them to see how we've done, to face our own doubts and insecurities. God doesn't work that way. God doesn't peddle in guilt. God doesn't peddle in shame. God joyfully and freely gives of the kingdom. It's a gift to us. It's interesting, our scripture today reminds us that us sometimes is our focus more than it needs to be, and not in a healthy way. Not in a healthy way. Less of us and more of others could be a short summary of Jesus' words today. Less of us 
more of others, less of our ego, less of our need, less of our control, less of our own insecurities. Clear that out and invest in the community. Let others invest in us. Come to this relationally. Less of us. We start by selling it off, selling those things that trap us, getting rid of those things that become our obsessions so that we don't isolate, we don't hoard, we don't make ourselves the center of the universe. Less of us selling things off, maybe not even literally, just cleaning house when we need to. And then giving, giving to others, to those in need, giving so that we don't find ourselves trapped in cycles of selfishness, giving so that we're investing in a way that won't be wasted, investing in a way that won't be wasted. Less of us selling off, more of others giving, buying in, investing in those around us. Yes, sometimes we'll give and others will take advantage. It's going to happen. Sometimes we will give and others will be disrespectful of the gift. Yeah, it's going to happen. Sometimes we give and others, well, sometimes they turn out to be nicer than us. But sometimes, sometimes they're not. But we should give anyway. We should invest in those around us anyway. Sometimes people don't know how to receive love. We've talked about that in recent weeks. Sometimes people don't know what to do with a gift of grace. Sometimes they don't know what they were going to do with the freedom to love. So we give anyway. Not to the point that it's unhealthy for us. We've talked about that in previous weeks, the importance of strong boundaries, not sacrificing with strings attached, not sacrificing where we lose ourselves in the process, but giving from our hearts and giving away those things that weigh us down, that trap us, that keep us focused on self. But if we give because we know that giving is a good investment, if we give because we know we need to share with others, not just our finances, but our time, the time we give a loved one or a cranky person, both make us a better person. We know that the effort we give a neighbor or a stranger, or even the effort we give when no one is watching makes us a better person. Not in some magic book, not one day when we die, but it makes us a better person in this time, in this place. Giving shapes our hearts and souls. Giving shapes our identity by practicing loving God and loving neighbor like ourselves. Giving helps us practice. Whether we are giving each other our time, giving each other our attention, giving of our compassion, our vulnerability, our stories and imagination, we have so much we can invest in each other that will build up God's kingdom here and now. The kingdom of God is not something we have to invest in like a good deeds bank. If you give enough, you'll, give, you'll get more in the end. If you give enough, you'll live forever. No, it's something we invest in and we immediately reap the benefits. We see the ability of others to enjoy the blessings around us when we live in community, sharing with each other. The kingdom of God is something God is excited to give us. Not something God's trying to keep, not something God is trying to hide, not something held onto for the elite intellectual few or the spiritually enlightened, but something God is giving freely, something that God gives us now, something God gives us right here and right now. Some of you are old enough to still remember bad 80s and 90s songs including Belinda Carlisle's lyrics. Ooh, baby, do you know what that's worth? Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. They say in heaven, love comes first. So we'll make heaven our place on earth. And other than the sensual ooh, baby at the beginning of almost every line, it could almost be a statement of this scripture, an expression of the gospel. Heaven as a place on earth, right here, and right now, 
It just requires investing in others, not just our own future. It requires us letting others invest in us, letting them care about us, not keeping that task for ourselves. It requires all of us to find our identity, not in judging others, not in a list of achievements, not in a list of excuses. Investing in refugees, not finding ways to keep them out. Investing in creation care, not finding ways to exploit it. Investing in peace, not more ways to wage war. Investing in unity, not more ways to discriminate. Investing in our children, not finding ways to justify the mess we leave them. Investing in people, not trying to win, not trying to defeat each other, but truly hoping for the best in each other, investing in the best of each other. Living and loving neighbors as ourselves, loving God, loving neighbor and self as our identity. When we can invest in that, heaven will be known as a place on earth, right here, right now, in us, around us, and God help us through us. Amen. <laughs>